Hey everybody, I want to welcome you to the very first episode of The Current, real talk on real topics. My name is Bo, I'm joined along with Curtis, and we're so excited about this podcast, and I think our hope and our vision for this is that it's just a space in which we can be very honest about some things, be honest about um, some topics that are maybe relevant to us or relevant to culture, and hopefully you get to know us a little bit better, and we'll have some guests, I think, on the podcast. I know Prudence will be involved, our worship pastor here at Rhythm, and We'll spend some time here before we get going just introducing ourselves. Um, like I mentioned, my name is Bo. I'm the lead pastor at Rhythm Church in Mason City, Iowa. And uh, I've been the lead pastor here for, I think, almost three years now. So um, I served in youth ministry here since about February of 2012. So I'm going on about almost 11 years in full-time ministry. So... Um, yeah, I love Mason City. I've got a wife and two kids. They're amazing. My wife's name's Abigail. Um, she's a big support to me in ministry, and, and um, yeah, so that's a little bit about my life. Curtis, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, yeah. Uh, as you mentioned, my name's Curtis. Uh, I get the pleasure of serving as the associate pastor uh, here at Rhythm Church, and so it's a role I've gotten to do for the last a uh, couple of years, been on staff here since 2017, um, and so did a little bit helping out with the youth ministry at first, and have transitioned over and uh, dealing with some of the adult sides of the ministry, and just uh, excited to, um, I don't know, get to make disciples, and uh, I don't know, work with the church. So it's been really good. Um, I'm born and raised here in Mason City. I've been around here a long time. I went off to Chicago to go to school for a few years, and so uh, it's been special for me to be able to just return to the location that kind of shaped me, get to return to the church that kind of shaped me, um, and get to just, I don't know, serve a community that's meant a lot about uh, my spiritual formation. It's been awesome. Awesome. Sounds good. Well, we'll just jump right in. We'll kind of tackle the, the topic at hand today. Um, as you can see, episode one is the truth <laughs> about pastors. And uh, we just wanted to, to take some time and, and really talk about what it means to be a pastor and what our lives are like and um, what it's like serving in full-time vocational ministry. Uh, I think there's a lot of misconceptions, and there's a few that we want to talk about today. But then there's also some, some reward. There's some great things about uh, being a pastor as well. And um, it was funny. For me, growing up, um, I don't know if you had this experience, but... Um, uh, you know, I, you know, graduated high school, went on to college. I played a couple years of college baseball, but then I decided that I wanted to be a pastor. And, um, it was funny because this was, you know, before I was married even, but after even the first couple years I was married, I'd go home for Christmas and, and I don't want to knock on my family. I'm sure many of them are listening, <laughs> but when I decided to be a pastor, it's almost like even my family treated me a little bit differently. You know, I think in our culture, um, pastors can be elevated or they're, they're not really considered human in some sense. Um, I had uh, an example I always, always remember is I would go home for Christmas and my family would give me gifts. And then after I became a pastor, it was always Christian items, like, oh, yeah. like a, a Christian bracelet like with a cross on it or a, some Christian t-shirt. Um, you know, and, and again, I, I didn't mind them. You know, I, I didn't wear them a whole lot, if I'm being honest, just because they were just kind of cheesy. I remember one of them in particular. Um, it said, I work on commission. And underneath it said, the Great Commission. Oh, my gosh. You know? And so, like, <laughs> I mean, it's really nice and thoughtful. I mean, it really, I'm not, I'm not knocking on my, my family, but, you know, it was either that, like, you know, Christian t-shirts or, um, you know, Christian books or another version of the Bible. And, and, yeah, those are great. Like, they're awesome gifts and thoughtful gifts. I'm not knocking on it. But at the same time, you know, I just wanted a video game. <laughs> you know, or I just wanted, uh, you know, uh, something that had to do with baseball. Like I love baseball. And, and I think sometimes pastors are, are treated just, you know, um, differently for some reason, as if we're not necessarily human, that we're, you know, some kind of ulterior person, you know, or, or, yeah, it's, it's just strange. And, um, so for me, I, I think getting people to understand that we are real people that, yeah. that, you know, culture may view us as, and they should, I mean, we, we do have a special and unique calling on our life that I think is unique, but at the same time, like I said, I, I enjoy video games. I enjoy baseball. I enjoy just everyday normal things. It's not like I just sit around all day and have Christian thoughts or just sit around <laughs> and read my Bible or, I mean, I enjoy listening to podcasts and watching TV shows and um, I'm very much a normal person. And I think that's the main thing that, you know, really what I wanted to communicate today and that people understand just about me as their pastor is, 
man, I'm just a normal guy and I like to have fun. And, um, you know, you can catch me in the, in the lake with my shirt off trying to get a suntan, you know, it's <laughs> like, I, I really like, I, I love life and I enjoy life and I think it's fun. And, um, yeah, I kind of want that, that stigma or whatever you want to call it, the, just the, you know, whatever they think about pastors to kind of go away. And, and honestly, I love, like, I'll be out, you know, with some friends at a, you know, um, getting a drink or something. And we'll be, you know, I was a part of this football club for a while. And it was so cool. I think one of the greatest compliments I would ever get in those settings is I would meet somebody for the first time and we'd have a great conversation. And then they, they would finally ask, you know, what do you do? <laughs> and I'll say, well, actually, I'm a pastor. And they're like, wow, you don't seem like a pastor. And that's, that's honestly one of the greatest compliments I could get because I don't want to seem like a pastor to people. I want to be able to build authentic and genuine relationships that, I mean, I'm not going to lie. Hopefully I'll be able to share Christ yeah. with them and they'll be able to hear about some of the most important things in my life, meaning Jesus and this church and my family. And, um, you know, I hope those conversations come up, but I hope it's a natural conversation and a natural just kind of segue into that, not just this automatic, oh my gosh, you're a pastor. Um, I got to treat you differently. So that's some things I experienced. Um, but I know it also can creep into the church a little bit. I think sometimes there's even expectations among Christians in churches of pastors. Um, yeah, what do you what do you yeah. think about that? Well, I definitely. I think on the one hand, it's, it's so true. You know, while it's it's true, this being a pastor does define and, and permeate all these different spots of our life. Of course, it touches um, so much that we do who we are. But I think it's important to remember. Yeah, it's not the only thing we are. Like we were pastors, but we're not just pastors. Yeah. You know, we want to have normal conversations, and you know, I always find myself waiting for that that drop in the conversation to say oh so what do you do and then you get to say oh I'm a pastor and you can almost sometimes see it in their body language like oh oh you know and it, it it sometimes I think puts you in a in a weird spot where there's this expectation to be something altogether different and we can find that in the church world too um it's there's this weird idea of being like a professional Christian right it's so weird everybody else you know you're going about your life it's a, it's a part of your faith but um, it's not so closely tied to, you know, your job, your occupation, your life. And I think when you're in the church space, um, there can be this tendency to kind of elevate the person that's the pastor and say, oh, well, they've got it all figured out. Oh, they're the person that's in charge. Oh, they're the person that's, you know, um, giving all the direction, giving all the leadership. And so I think it's helpful to say, just like we're a normal person in our everyday life, we're also normal people in our spirituality, you know, um, we are prone to the same sort of struggles, the same sort of ups and downs, you know, um, it's not like I became a pastor and then everything smooth sailing or up, you know, now it's, it, it's, it's, yeah. it's tough, you know, we're normal people, but we also experience the same ups and downs a normal spiritual person would face, you know? Yeah, for sure. I, I know, um, speaking to that, you know, some of the struggles I think pastors face is, and just building off what, you said there, um, the struggles in my life, I know that other people relate to. And it's not like, again, like you're saying that I'm immune to those struggles. Yeah. You know, I've battled addictions. I've battled depression. I've battled anxiety. I've battled some of those things that are just common to man. And, um, I, I think it, it helps me be a pastor, you know, in some ways, yeah. like you can, you can relate, but, but in a lot of ways too, I think it, get it, get it, 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 that elevation of a pastor, hopefully, I want to be able to teach through some of those weaknesses. I want to be able to yeah. communicate through some of those weaknesses again, because we're just, we're doing, we're, we're trying to figure it out too. You exactly. know, we're trying to, yeah. to, to make it, you know, and, and for sure. figure it out just as long with, with, with everyone else. It's not like we, um, have it all figured out. Now I will say, um, I know some people have had very negative experiences with pastors because of their sin and lack of accountability. So, sure. you know, just as much as we preach, um, you know, like, have people in your life that'll hold you accountable. We desperately need that as well because we're not immune to yes. those struggles. We really need um, yeah. people in our lives that can hold us accountable and, and really challenge us to be mm -hmm. um, the, the people we need to be. And luckily I've had that in my life since I've, especially since I've lived here, I've had an amazing, I mean, our elder team is great here at Rhythm. I know we've had, you know, staff yeah. members that have helped hold me accountable in my conduct and, and that's really how it should be because, again, I know I mean, just talking with a gal pretty recently who was just burned by a pastor mm -hmm. and just hurt pretty yeah. severely yeah. by a pastor. I know that stuff happens. And, and to them, I just, man, my heart breaks because that is like the furthest thing from what a pastor should be called uh, to ever hurt or 
um, abuse people in, in any yeah. way. I mean, yeah. it, but again, it, it's because we're not immune to sin. And, and while that is absolutely awful, um, you know, I just want to pray for them and, and hopefully they, you know, can, can find some peace and, and reconciliation with themselves and the others that they've hurt and with God. Um, but yeah, I kind of want to spend just a moment here talking more about, you know, I know we have struggles. I know there's things in ministry that are hard. Um, and as pastors, sometimes it's elevated because uh, it does feel lonely, I think, sometimes. Yeah. yeah like, I mean, it, it really does, even though I have people that are accountable, um, that I'm accountable to, that hold me accountable. Um, it's hard to, to find a, a pastor for a pastor, if that makes sense. Because yeah. you're constantly pouring out. You're constantly giving. And who's giving into me? You know, that's one yeah. of those things that, that makes it kind of hard, you know? Um, I don't know if you've experienced that. I mean, it's tough. Like, Definitely, it, it's yeah. tough. Like, who's feeding us, you know? Like, yeah. It's, I, it's hard. I feel like I noticed that, and I think, I know one of the things I'm thankful for about our staff here is we try to find a, a way amidst the staff to kind of be uh, mutually encouraging and helping one another and do those things. I'm, I'm grateful. I know some people don't have that as much, but I could definitely feel a difference even just um, going through college, preparing for ministry as I'm getting ready. You have all these, you know, people around you who are cheering you on, peers, but you have teachers, these people over you kind of helping. And it, and you notice that difference when you step into the ministry world. Suddenly it's like, no, you're that for all those people. And you, you find yourself missing that space yourself. And so it, it can be something that's difficult is to find, um, you know, some, some help, um, some leadership. I don't know, some mentorship, I guess, yeah. is probably the yeah. best way to put it. Yep. Um, and it's difficult, you know. And not only just in sort of a, a, a spiritual setting, I think there's also, um, there can be some of that just in, in terms of relationships with friendships and whatnot. You know, we, we have friends we hang out with, but... Like you said earlier, there's that moment in the conversation where it's like, oh, you're a pastor. And you're like, oh, people feel almost afraid to be authentic. It can be yeah. tough to make some meaningful relationships. They feel yeah. like they have to be on guard, you know? For sure. Yeah, I've definitely, definitely experienced that for sure. And I just want to just take a minute here and say, if you're a pastor and you happen to be listening to this, hopefully you find some encouragement and know that you're not alone. Like, you know, what you're experiencing as a pastor is common. You know, it's, it's something mm. I think we all experience. And so I just want to encourage you and say, you know, just hang in there and really do your best to make and develop friendships and authentic friendships. And, but you're not alone in that. And, um, it is a very, very common thing. I think, I mean, even both yeah. of us have, have experienced. And so I just want to encourage you in that. And hopefully, so, you know, we can be an encouragement to, to pastors that are listening, but, but also, you know, those that are in our congregation that might be listening, mm. um, hopefully help you have a better, deeper understanding of some of the things we struggle with. And, and I'm not going to be ashamed to say this because I think it's important. And I know maybe the bulk of our audience will be Rhythm Church listeners. But I just want to say, encourage your pastor. Um, they need it, especially right now in our culture and everything mm. that's going on. Man, I just want to say, encourage your spiritual leaders. Encourage them because um, it's just challenging. It's challenging leading people through this this time and this period, and it's challenging leading people in general, but especially right now. And so, if you're at another church or you're involved in another ministry, man, send send your pastor a note of encouragement and say thank mm. thank you for all that you do and thank you for your leadership. And I received some encouragement this week already, and it's just so meaningful to hear, you know. Right. And and a lot of times we do. Um, what we do week in and week out and people appreciate it, but they never express that. They never express yeah. the appreciation. So it's always nice to hear, um, you know, when, when you're making a difference or people appreciate your leadership or your decision oh, yeah. making. Um, so I encourage you to encourage your pastors because it is, it can be lonely and it is challenging. <laughs> they are dealing with issues too. Um, yeah. So encourage them. Yeah. Um, so yeah, hopefully that's an encouragement to you pastors out there, but also an encouragement to, to you that are in churches and, and underneath the, the authority of your pastor mm -hmm. or, you know, and serving alongside them. Hopefully that's an encouragement as well. And I know we've talked about a lot of struggles, but there's also some great things about being yeah. a pastor. And so we want to end there just by talking about, I think, just some, some amazing things that, that, you know, we get to experience as, as pastors. What are your, some of your, yeah. your favorite things? Yeah. I think it's good because there is so much um, that's great about what we get to do as well. Uh, of course, each job comes with some of its struggles, but there's a lot that is alongside this job that, we get that other occupations don't, you know. Sometimes I have to feel like I pinch myself when I say, like, <laughs> yeah. I get paid every two weeks to think about God and to talk to people about God. I get paid to enter into what is some of the most just 
important and, and difficult spaces of people's lives. You know, that's yeah. a really um, unique opportunity. You know, for we're sure. there for all the, the highs and the lows. We're there for the, the births. We're there for the deaths. We're there for the celebrations of, you know, victory over addiction. We're there for the relapses. You know, mm. we get to, um, I don't know, inhabit space in people's lives that few others get invited into. And so yeah. it really is um, a privilege in some ways too. You know, that's why you, we, you know, it, we deal with the, the difficulties because it is really such a, a special opportunity. Yeah, yeah. I think it's it's honestly one of the most rewarding things for me. Um, you know, just thinking about what's happening, what, what happened this past month, and what I'm gonna have the opportunity to do this next month and the mm. month after is perform weddings. Like, yeah, such an exciting day, mm -hmm. and I am such a big believer in marriage, and I'm a believer in families, mm. and I want them to thrive. And gosh, what a blessing it is to be able to be a part of such those those kind of monumental moments in people's lives. It's, yeah. it's such a privilege and it's so amazing. And, you know, I think a lot of times people think, oh, this is funny. Um, I'm performing uh, a wedding on my anniversary, which is August 1st, by the way. I'll be married for 11 years, August 1st. I'm excited about that. But um, it's funny because I, I've told some people, hey, like I'm, I'm performing a wedding on the first of my anniversary. And they're like, what? You're doing a wedding on your anniversary? I'm like, yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> like, I'll ne first of all, I'll never forget their anniversary. Uh, true. Um, but I love it. I love it just because it's my anniversary. I mean, it's, it's, it's just going to be so amazing to be able, be able to be a part of their day mm. and to celebrate with them and, yeah. and really just – wish them the best in their marriage because marriage is a beautiful thing and, and it's an amazing thing. And, and I think, you know, God loves marriages too. And, um, yeah, I, I love being able to be a part of those special moments. And, uh, it's, a, it's a joy as a pastor to be able to yeah. celebrate with people and walk with people in some of the, the best moments of their life. I think about baptisms too. And mm -hmm. man, like what a, oh, yeah. an amazing just moment in people's lives where they're celebrating, you know, their new life in Christ and mm -hmm. man, it's just special. It really is special. And so, yeah. Anything else about the truth about pastors? Gosh. I know. I feel like we covered a whole lot here. I, and really, I think the hope is, uh, on the one hand, give you a, a peek behind the curtain a little bit, let you to see, oh, we're people too. You know, we want to yeah. be seen and, 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 you know, for who we are and yeah. not just what we do. Uh, and that's important. But uh, also, hopefully, to those of you who are pastors, being encouraged is something we want to see happen. But, but like I said, for those of you who maybe aren't in ministry, um, give you a chance to to see kind of the ins and outs of the job, but also, yeah, encourage your pastors, reach out, let them know they're doing a good job. You know, it goes a long way. Yeah, for sure. Well, uh, I think that's all we got for today, but thanks so much for joining with us on the very first episode of The Current Real Talk on Real Topics. I want to encourage you to subscribe to uh, this um, podcast on Apple Podcasts, or you can find us on our brand new YouTube channel. Um, you can look for Rhythm Church on YouTube, and you can subscribe there. In fact, I would encourage you to do that because we have other content that'll be releasing soon. Yeah. Not just a podcast, which will be happening every Friday. Um, um, you can look forward to that content as well. But we have other content coming out as well that you can find on YouTube there. So, um, I guess that's it for today, and we will catch you next time on the current.